So, you've played the Anthem demo. You've been fighting along, doing the missions, doing the strongholds. You've got all these fancy, flashy, flashy, elemental stuff. But what do they do? In order to actually do well and actually deal damage in Anthem, you need to understand two fundamental aspects of the game. The flashy, flashy elements and combos. Early levels, these won't really be important, but they will be later in the game, especially when you come to the Elder game of Anthem. So first, let's look at the elements. Slideshow time people! To be able to perform them awesome flashy flashy combos, one needs to understand elements in Anthem. In Anthem, there are four elements. You have fire, which deals fire based damage, it applies a damage over time, also known as a dot, and gives enemies a burning status. You have lightning, which deals a spike damage, stuns the target, and gives shock status to enemies around it. You have ice, which freezes enemies in its place, incapacitating them and making them unable to move. And finally you have acid. This does not add a dot, much to belief, you would assume acid would be dot, but instead it increases the damage taken on enemies. So those are the four elements. Now that we have that out the way, we must understand what works best for enemies. After all, we have three types of enemies. You have the physical shield type enemies, energy shield type enemies, and no shield type enemies. For enemies with physical shields like the enforcers, fire and acid deal more damage. Fire ignores the shield and simply ignites the enemy, thus allowing you to combo, but we'll get to combos at a later point. For enemies with energy shields, like the elite storms that you meet, Ice and Lightning do more damage to the shields. They simply melt the blue shield away way way quicker than Fire or Acid could ever do. So if you're fighting a physical based enemy, you want to use Fire or Acid. If you want to fight an energy based shield enemy, you want to use Ice or Lightning. Finally you come to the third type of enemy. Enemies with no shield, allowing status effects to be applied upon enemy being hit with the element. These have no protection, and in order to apply the status effects, the shield has to be removed. So the third type of enemy is the prime example for this. If you apply fire, it applies a dot. Acid increases damage taken for the enemy. Frost freezes enemies. Lightning applies shock status effect to enemies. So right now you should have a clear understanding of how the flashy flashy elements work and how important these elements are in order for you to progress. With that out the way, and you now understanding how the elements work in Anthem, now we move on to the fun stuff, the combos. What are combos? When you use two specific sets of moves, it triggers what's called a combo and deals more damage. A primer is an ability that applies an elemental status effect on an enemy. A detonator simply, well, detonates the primer on the prime target to create the end result of a combo. It's important to note that you can have abilities that deal no primer and detonation effects and will have a higher raw damage but ultimately deal less damage than an overall combo. So though they are viable, you want to be using a combo whenever you can. So what are the skills for priming and detonating? So if you look at the chart we have here, I've separated each item with primer and detonator. A quick and easy way to know which one is a primer and a detonator is by the symbol associated with it. A round circle with an inner circle is a primer. An explosive symbol that looks like a shuriken star is a detonator. So how you want to go about this is use Inferno Grenade and then follow that up with say Seeking Missile. That will create a combo and you can self combo here with Ranger. You can also use Mei Li to set a primer and then use your ultimate to detonate. The Colossus as well can use Firewall Mortar to prime and then can use Siege Artillery to detonate. It can also use its ultimate to detonate as well, as well as its melee. So you have multiple options here. Storm is pretty much the king when it comes to priming. Not only does it have ice, fire and lightning capabilities to actually prime a target with Ice Storm, Living Flame, Shock Blast, but its ultimate is also a prime and a detonator. Its melee also acts as a detonator. So the storm is actually one of the most beneficial and influential jobs a party can have. It's very good solo, it's very good as a team effort, and it is way way overpowered. However, it's also weak defensively, even though I have noticed that the interceptor is slightly weaker. And then we come to the interceptor. The interceptor has very little in way of priming compared to the other three javelins. In fact, it has three elements of priming 
but only two ways of detonating. It can prime through acid, arc and lightning and its detonator is only restricted to two, one being a lightning based attack and the other one a raw detonator. It's also worth noting that each javelin has a combo effect and this is what makes each javelin stand out completely. The ranger's combo effect is a critical target damage. It's a high impact single target attack that deals a lot of damage to a single target. So if you're fighting bosses or high value targets that are really tanky, this is the one you want because it will deal a lot of damage. If you look at the Colossus, it's an AOE explosion. At the end of the first stronghold, you have a plethora of adds coming at you during the ad phase. If you prime these and then use the Colossus, all the enemies there at once get a combo effect. It's extremely good for ad clearing and honestly, one of the most OP and powerful. Then you have the Storm. The Storm's effect is an AOE spread. It spreads the elemental effect to nearby enemies. If you prime a target by freezing them and then you detonate, a nearby enemy will then be frozen and then you can detonate again. It's a pretty good support build and overall Storm is great when it comes to this sort of thing. And finally we have the Interceptor which gains an aura of the detonated prime. So if you have a ice based prime on the target and you detonate it and the, and the Interceptor is close by, it gains that ice aura. Then it can go around the enemies and those enemies around it, they will also be primed with aura allowing you to detonate freely on a wider scale. So as you can see, each javelin has its own arsenal of priming and detonating. Each one has a unique combo effect to make it stand out from the rest. Storm is ideally the best at priming targets. Interceptor is the best at support by applying those prime targets to all the enemies around it. The Colossus is fantastic at clearing out a huge number of mobs with its AOE combo effect. And if you're looking for that single target boss damage, you won't beat the Ranger. It's that simple. But as you can see here, it's not the single target effects that are being mattered, it's the actual combo. You need to prime and detonate. Really, that's all there is to it. Not all elements can prime as we can see from this chart here again. However, most can. It's also worth noting that the demo had abilities in the forge that showed they were not primers, but once equipped in the world, you had this circle icon next to the ability indicating it is. This was a bug of the demo and is fixed already confirmed by Ben Irving in the final release. The final thing to note is that only one person can trigger a combo on a prime target. So if a storm does their job and primes the target and the other three try to detonate, only one of them will detonate the target and the other two will do raw non-combo damage. The target at this point will need to be reprimed again for detonation and you can continue and yes, you can prime and detonate using your ultimates. It's a great feeling when you do this, believe me. And that's everything there is to elements and combos. I hope this video was useful and it's given you a greater understanding of legendary flashy flashy elemental stuff and how they tie together and can be great to aid you, especially later in the game. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you're unsure about anything or simply want to share your experiences. I read every comment as you know. Until the next video, remain legend.